Hi, I'm Sharon Tang and this is Evening Highlights. Bank Negara says it's working with state governments and the banking industry to align the criteria used in approving home financing to make it easier for would-be home buyers to get a loan. It hasn't disclosed any details of the state criteria, but regardless, it's a welcome move. The central bank's statement comes on the same day radar. The Real Estate and Housing Developers Association says it wants the government to encourage banks to lend. Radar Deputy President Dato Engineer Som Heng Chun was at the signing ceremony of a memorandum of collaboration between the association and CIDB Malaysia to promote low carbon practices. Now the market may be tepid, but he says there's still demand for property. But one key issue is that home buyers are finding it hard to get financing, so some help from the government would be good. Another is, of course, the price of property. But Radar believes this can be brought down if developers shift to the industrialised building system. This is basically prefab construction with the components of a structure manufactured and assembled in a factory before being transported to the construction site. Soam's remarks come after Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said yesterday that the government has agreed to review the national housing policy. This includes a proposal for the government to control property prices instead of leaving them to market forces. You can blame it on the GST or the stagnant salaries or just plain bad spending habits. But the fact is the majority of Malaysians are in debt, 68% to be exact. Manulife surveyed eight countries in Asia, that's Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, Japan and the Philippines. And it says we've got the highest proportion of debt compared with our neighbours. For many Malaysians, debt has become a way of life. According to Manulife, the average debt for Malaysians is 56,000 ringgit, nearly 10 times the average monthly personal income. So what are Malaysians borrowing for? According to Manulife's survey, 60% are in debt due to daily living expenses. Over 40% are borrowing to pay rent, while 37% need extra cash for their children's education. Manulife blames the high debt levels on just plain poor financial management, with respondents failing to effectively manage their cash flow. It's no surprise. Easy access to personal loans and credit card financing aside, Many wealth advisors have said that Malaysians are not in the habit of saving money. In fact, just a couple of months ago, Bank Negara Agency, AKPK, which is the Credit Counselling and Debt Management Agency, revealed that over 25,000 Malaysians under the age of 35 have been declared bankrupt in the last five years. The Asian Institute of Finance also published its own survey findings last October. It said many Malaysian young adults are in debt as a result of impulse buying behaviour. It's that time of the year again. Yes, it's tax season. Now, aside from our inability to save money, we Malaysians are also really good at procrastinating. The good news is, if you've been late in filing your taxes, all you have to do is make a voluntary disclosure and your penalty will be reduced. So you've been putting off filing your taxes and now you're looking at hefty fines of between 45 and 300% of the tax undercharged. Meanwhile, the Inland Revenue Board is aiming to collect 1 billion ringgit in taxes this year, as well as reduce the tax gap in the country. Here's a win-win situation. Come clean from between now to December 15th, and the IRB will offer you reduced penalties of between 15 and 20%. Now, if you or your company is being audited and investigated for tax-related cases, say tax evasion, a voluntary disclosure will get you a penalty reduction of between 25 and 35 per cent. Ordinarily, penalties for audit cases are between 45 and 100 per cent. According to the World Bank and the IMF, Malaysia has a tax gap of between 20 and 30 percent. That's considered high compared with between 5 and 6 percent for other countries. And that wraps up Evening Highlights. I'm Sharon Tang. Thanks for watching.